I believe I receive the goodness of the Lord in the land, in the land of the living. I believe I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land, in the land of the living. So wait for the Lord, let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord and be strong. I believe I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land, in the land of the living. I believe I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land. The land of the living. So wait for the Lord. Let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord and be strong. I believe I will see the goodness of the Lord. In the land, 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 the land of the living. All right. So we believe that we will see the goodness of the Lord, which means we will see Him face to face. So we wait on the Lord, and we take courage in the fact that the Lord is going to come again. Okay. So anticipation for the lord's second coming you know every christian is preparing himself to face the lord to see the lord face to face so that's a glorious thing that the bible promises us jesus himself when he was ascending to heaven said that he will come again so we are waiting and that wait is a joyful experience because we know that the lord is surely going to come he is definitely coming soon There is joy in the Lord, there is love in His Spirit, there is hope in the knowledge of Him. There's a fountain that flows like a river from heaven, abounding in love to my soul. All blessing and honor are here, and all glory and power are here. Let all wisdom and strength be the Lord's in this place. Let all glory be given to Him. There is joy in the Lord, there is love in His Spirit, there is hope in the knowledge of Him. There's a fountain that flows like a river from heaven, abounding in love to my soul. All blessing and honor are here, and all glory and power are here. Let all wisdom and strength be the Lord's in this place. Let all glory be given to Him. There is joy in the Lord, there is love in His Spirit, there is hope in the knowledge of Him. There's a fountain I know, every time I am near it, my heart overflows to the Lord. There's a fountain I know, every time I am near it, 
my heart overflows to the Lord. My heart overflows to the Lord. All right, let's pray. Gracious and loving Master, there is joy in the Lord. There is love in His Spirit. Even as we hope for your coming, we know that your coming is soon. Help us, O oh Lord, to be prepared to face you, to meet you face to face, O oh Lord, Father. Help us, O oh Lord, to be prepared in our daily life, all that you command us to do. Help us to be obedient. When you come, O oh Lord, we have to be found faithful because you have called us to a great purpose. We give ourselves into your hands. We pray that through our study today, your name would be glorified, magnified. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Acts chapter 10. Okay, I'm typing it. Acts 10, 34 to 48. Okay, let's go. Aaron, start. Acts 10. When Peter began to speak, I now realize how true it is that God does not show fear to Okay. 35. Uh, David. What was the verse? Uh, Acts 10 verse 35. You get it? But, but accepts men from every nation who fear him and do what is right. <clears throat> okay, 36. Matthew. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is the Lord of all. Okay, 37. Jacinta. Verse 37, just in that. That word you know which was proclaimed throughout all Judah and Judea from the newly after the Baptist uh, which John preached. Came 38, Jasnia. Okay, 39, Jessica. And we are our witnesses of, of, all, of all things which 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 things which he did. He did both in, both in land, both in land. Both in the land of the Jews and, and in, in Jerusalem, who they killed by hanging on the, the tree. Correct. Okay. So, 40. Uh, Sean.
him god raised up on the third day and showed him openly okay 41 joshua not to all the people but unto witnesses chosen before of god even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead 42 joseph and he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that it is he who or ordained by god to be judge of the living and the dead 43 nathaniel to him all the prophets witness that through his name whoever believes in him will receive remission of sins remission of sins yes okay who else is left mark 34 we'll go back to 34 34 yeah then peter began to say i now realize how so it, it is that god does not know does not show partiality partiality okay 35 daniel Uh, 36. Whoever worship him and thus it is thirty five or forty five. Thirty five, thirty five. Uh, whoever worship him and thus what is acceptable to him, no matter what. Praise you belong to. Correct. Okay. So did I miss out anybody? Uh, I did not miss out anybody. I hope. Okay. So thank you for reading. Right. So because time is less, I thought we'll just take up till forty-three. Okay. So here Peter is opening his statement, his message to the household of Cornelius. Okay. Cornelius has invited all his relatives to hear this message. God has asked Cornelius to send for Peter, who was living in Joppa, with a tanner, uh, in a tanner's house. So they sent uh, four guys, you know, one um, uh, religious person, a, sw- a soldier, and three friends. They they were sent to collect Peter and bring him to Sorry, Cornelius' no. house. Yes, Aaron. Wasn't that three people? Total three people. One of them were, uh, one of them was a spiritual man, no, a soldier. But one, one keyword soldier. soldier and ah. Two and two moon. Two correct, moon. correct, correct. So one devout soldier and two uh, other people. I mean, uh, two of his household servants were sent to collect him. So three total, three people came to Joppa and they collected Peter. Peter had already seen a vision uh, of uh, you know accepting people who are uh, non-Jews. So you now Peter was boldly going there. And uh, as a Jew, this is something that never happens as a Jew, but as a Christian. now jesus is teaching peter to accept uh, gentiles so peter is opening his mouth and said in truth i perceive that god shows no partiality that's an amazing statement you know in my school uh, there were a lot of teachers who liked certain people in the class okay so they'll come to our class uh, and um, when it comes to you know uh, appreciating children they will only appreciate some people in the class and some people who you know who are, who are naughty kids or you know whom the teacher doesn't like teacher will always you know uh, show partiality against them like you know so we used to feel bad about that and sometimes you know just because uh, she doesn't like the teacher doesn't like a certain person she always ask questions only to that person and you know then the punishment also comes to that person only so we feel we used to feel sad that you know some teachers are partial sometimes at home we find that one parent is partial you know maybe the father or the mother is partial to one of the children that's also not right no so we feel bad when it's not us that they are showing favor to but not always sometimes it happens like that so but peter says in god there is no partiality god doesn't look at your uh, your skin color god doesn't look at your language god doesn't look at which background you are from god shows no partiality which means god loves every human being as he loves any other human being okay so which means 
you know in the prodigal son story also jesus actually talks about the father and the sons uh, then whichever example jesus quotes you know he always says he is a heavenly father so as a father as a parent as a creator god accepts and loves everyone equally that's what this uh, verse talks about okay god shows no partiality but in every uh, now imagine that some uh, till then peter was a jew he thought that god shows partiality to jews because god chose them and through him only through the jews only uh, jesus came to the earth so he thought that jews were special till now but now he understands that jew gentile it doesn't matter god does not show favoritism god does not show any partiality if you are a jew or a gentile but in every nation whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him so his his eyes are searching in every la- uh, land every country you know uh, every city he is searching for people who are righteous and fears him See? fears means respect him obey him that's what fears actually means righteousness means doing the right thing doing just things doing uh, you know uh, not doing any corrupt things evil things so god is looking for people who are searching for him you know, who are seeking after him so god loves those people who who know that god exists and they are careful not to do anything wrong because they know that one day we have to face god and we have to give an account for every word that is spoken every action that we do we have to give an account for that so god was going to question you why did you do that you know i gave you these things and why did you do this with that you know sometimes god gives us a motorcycle and we misuse that motorcycle you know we go over the speed limit and we go and you know knock down some people some children and then uh, you know police comes and they arrest us so they'll say like hey why why did you ride the bicycle motorcycle like that you're supposed to ride it below the speed limit but you broke the law you see so and you have to be punished the same way god will also hold us accountable if we break his law so god is very very just and he is very very loving but his justice will not uh, make him close his eyes when it comes to justice okay his love uh, will not uh, make him close his eyes when it comes to justice he is a perfect judge so god is looking at uh, every person every nation whoever fears him and uh, whose works righteousness is accepted by him the word which god sent to the children of israel preaching peace through jesus christ he is lord of all that word you know which is proclaimed throughout all judea see so cornelius being in israel he has heard about jesus christ and he says through jesus christ god is actually preaching peace through jesus christ see if anyone sins he becomes an enemy of god sin creates distance between god and us so god is not happy when people sin because god cannot save that person if he continues to remain in sin so what does god do god sent jesus to save people from their sins all the sins of the people jesus took upon himself when he went to the cross so anybody who believes in jesus now peace will come between god and that person if i believe in jesus i will receive god's peace if i believe in jesus my sins will be forgiven and god can accept me so that's what he says you have heard about it you have heard that jesus came you know so that through jesus peace was preached peace between god and peace between man he's lord of all that word you know which was proclaimed through all judea and began from galilee after the baptism with john preached see so he's talking all about the life that jesus lived here on earth from the time he got baptized by john all the way till his crucifixion jesus was preaching this peace of god how you and i can have peace with god god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for god was with him so his life is a testimony for us his life is an example for us how do we know that he is special because the holy spirit had given him power and authority to do miracles and signs and wonders not only his message but also his actions attested that he is a man sent by god then and we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the jews and in jerusalem and they killed by hanging on a tree see so we are the witnesses peter says i have seen with my own eyes what jesus did what jesus preached how he lived and then what did he do because he lived a holy life still they put him to the cross and he died 
him god raised up on the third day and showed him openly not to all the people but to witnesses chosen before by god even to us who ate and drank with him after he arose from the dead so god raised up jesus from the dead and almost 500 people saw this resurrected jesus jesus who came back from the dead 500 eye witnesses were there peter says we who ate and drank with we the disciples we the apostles we also were with him we also saw him risen from the dead then he says and he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that it is he who ordained by god to be judge of the living and the dead see so he says though he rose up from the grave now he is not with us why because he's gone to heaven and when he comes back he's not going to come as a baby anymore he's going to come as the judge of all the people living and the dead if you're dead also you'll be raised up from the grave and you'll be judged you can't escape from his judgment now because he is the great judge of the whole universe okay so you're going to be judged anybody who has been born here on earth will be judged by the righteous judge by the just judge you can't escape his judgment then it is to him all the prophets witness that through his name whoever believes in him will receive remission of sins so you can't stand before this judge because if you have one sin you can't stand before this judge so it is if you want forgiveness of sins then come to jesus jesus will forgive you and then you can stand before god with the righteousness of jesus christ you can stand before god will cleanse you he will forgive your sins then you will be sinless before god so the only option that we have to escape from this judgment is to receive jesus as our savior and lord if we don't receive him as savior and lord then god will judge us and even if one sin if you break one law from the 10 commandments you have broken all the other 9 commandments also you can't escape from his judgment god will definitely have to punish anyone for the sins that they have committed so he says the only way to get free of that to escape from the judgment is to receive jesus as your lord and savior then he will forgive your sins and you will be cleansed you'll be as though you have not sinned before god that's how cleansed you will become if you receive jesus as your savior and lord this is the message that peter preached how jesus came to the earth how jesus lived a sinless life how god attested that he is a holy man he is sent from heaven by the signs that he did by the power of the holy spirit and then finally when he died god raised him up from the grave right. and anyone who believes he has forgiveness of sins in jesus christ and when he comes again he's going to come as the judge that time if you have not received him and received this forgiveness you will be judged by god and you will be sent to hell for not receiving jesus as your savior so let that not be said about any of us so let's see the the reaction of response of cornelius and his family we will read it next week but understand that uh, you know god has this is what the gospel is okay gospel is telling others what jesus came on the earth to do and how he did it how he died and how god raised him up from the dead okay now anyone who believes this anyone who believes that jesus came to die for my sins they have forgiveness in christ all the sins god will forgive and that person does not have to stand before the judge his sins are forgiven the judge has forgiven him already so he doesn't have to come for sir, sir yes sir your video is stuck okay uh, not for the others i think it may be only for you okay let's pray heavenly father even as we come to your throne this evening we thank you and praise you that this gospel has been preached to each one of us help us to believe that our sins can be forgiven when we repent and receive jesus as our savior and lord we are truly sorry for every sin that we committed o oh lord because because of our sins jesus had to die on the cross a sinless jesus substituted for us and now when we receive you as our savior and lord we understand that all our sins would be forgiven us and we don't have to stand for the judgment of god we don't have to face jesus as judge we just have to face him as our savior and lord what a blessing it is o oh lord to believe it and be saved we don't have to do anything to be saved but just to believe in what christ has already done for us we receive your gift of free salvation help us to live a life 
that shows repentance, that shows that we have been forgiven, a life that is pleasing to the Father, a life of righteousness, a life that fears God. Help us to live that life till Jesus comes back again. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.